It was the late 1800s, a time of rapid economic growth in American history, a time when industrialization, technological advances, and urbanization brought in colossal wealth, and a time when modesty was all out the window and bold displays of opulence was all the rage. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Today we are taking you back to the Gilded Age, a period so few know much about, but one surrounded by much fascination. We figured what better way to learn about this fantastic period than by taking you on a tour of some of the most decadent and most authentic Gilded Age mansions that stood the test of time. These are the same mansions you can easily visit if you'd like to witness this alluring age before your very eyes. Some fall within the official Gilded Age, others just a tad beyond. Nevertheless, they all stand as a testament to this bygone era, and we can promise none of them will disappoint. So without further ado, here are the 20 most amazing mansions of the Gilded Age. Number 1. The Breakers. Newport is a massive haven for Gilded Age mansions. In the years between the 1850s and 1900, it was known as an exclusive retreat where the wealthy tycoons of New York and Philadelphia would spend their summers. Hence, spurring a grand display of one-upping each other and building some of the most elaborate summer cottages anyone had ever seen in their day and probably even still today. The Breakers is the grandest of the Newport lineup boasting 48 bedrooms and 27 fireplaces on a 13-acre property. Built between 1893 and 1895 by Cornelius Vanderbilt II, in the Italian Renaissance style, it has been the backdrop of multiple movies and television series, as well as hosted many famous dignitaries and guests over the years. Today the property is owned by the Newport Preservation Society, and with its original furnishings in well-preserved condition, it operates as a house museum. Commonly referred to as the flagship of the Newport mansions, it welcomes visitors from all over the world to experience its posh interiors, as well as breathtaking views of the ocean, all throughout the year. Number 2. The Nemours Estate. This French neoclassical mansion on the outskirts of Wilmington, Delaware was built from 1909 to 1910 on a 300-acre plot, and it boasts what is known as the largest formal French garden in North America. Constructed by Alfred I. DuPont, a very controversial member of the prominent DuPont family, as a gift to his second wife Alicia, this 77-room mansion showcases paintings from the European masters, and is surrounded by 200 acres of formal French gardens styled after Versailles. In addition, it has a chauffeur's garage housing an incredible collection of vintage automobiles. Owned today by the Nemours Foundation, you can visit any time of the year for touring. However, it might be best to mark your calendars for a visit during the spring and summer months, as you absolutely do not want to miss out on the gardens when they're in full bloom. Number 3. Hearst Castle. This extensive Spanish colonial revival estate in the hills of San Simeon, California, was conceived by publishing tycoon William Randolph Hearst, and extends way past the Gilded Age well into the Art Deco days of old Hollywood. Built between 1919 and 1947, it was under perpetual construction until Hearst's failing health compelled him to leave the castle. The architect of this famous masterpiece was Julia Morgan, the first woman to be accepted into Paris's prestigious École de Beaux-Arts, and also America's first independent female architect. By 1947, this hilltop retreat comprised of a main castle plus three guest cottages, totaling 42 bedrooms, 61 bathrooms, 19 sitting rooms, 127 acres of gardens, terraces, pools, walkways, tennis courts, a movie theater, an airfield, and during Hearst's lifetime, the world's largest private zoo. After his death, the property was donated to the state of California. Today, you can spend an entire day touring the grounds and grand rooms, experiencing what it was like to be a guest at this legendary estate. Number 4. Marble House. We're here at another Vanderbilt Newport mansion, this time William K. Vanderbilt's, Cornelius II's younger brother. Built in the years between 1888 and 1892 as a birthday gift to his wife Alva, it is one of the earliest examples of Beaux-Arts architecture in the United States. This impressive 50-room summer cottage got its name due to 500 cubic feet of marble used in its design, with its exterior walls in white Westchester marble. After divorcing William Vanderbilt only three years after the home was built, Alva married Oliver H. P. Belmont, who lived right down the street in his own mansion. She kept Marble House for herself and had a Chinese tea house built on the back lawn of the property, where she hosted rallies for women's voting rights. Today, Marble House belongs to the Preservation Society of Newport County, and as are so many of the Newport mansions, it is a national historic landmark that you can visit all throughout the year. Number 5. The Mount. 
This Berkshire, Massachusetts country estate was home to none other than the famed writer Edith Wharton and her husband. Built in 1902, she considered it her first real home. The 50-acre estate consists of the Georgian Revival main house, meticulously kept Italian gardens, and a stable. After the couple moved out in 1911, the home changed several hands and was eventually purchased by Edith Wharton Restoration in the late 90s. The organization succeeded in restoring the mansion and its gardens back to their original splendor, and is now one of the very few national historic landmarks dedicated to women. Today, the fully restored mansion is open for tours, lectures, and cultural events and it welcomes over 50,000 tourists to the Berkshires each year. Number 6. White Hall. You might know this impeccable Beaux-Arts mansion in Palm Beach as the Flagler Museum. But back in its heyday, it was simply known as White Hall. Completed in 1902, this famous estate was oil magnate and Florida developer Henry Flagler's gift to his third wife. The couple used Whitehall as a winter retreat for 8 to 12 weeks out of the year. After the death of Mr. and Mrs. Flagler, the home changed multiple hands and was saved from demolition by one of Flagler's granddaughters. She established it as the Henry Flagler Museum in 1960 and the rest is history. Today, the perfectly restored museum and its gardens, feature guided tours, exhibits, special programs, and hosts a variety of local galas and balls throughout the year. And if you have an affinity for beautiful backdrops, with premier membership, you have the privilege of hosting your own private events on the premises. Number 7. The Carolans Chateau. Built by Harriet Pullman Carolan, the daughter of one of the wealthiest industrialists in Chicago, the massive estate is considered one of the finest examples of French classical architecture in America. Completed in 1916, it was only inhabited for two years, due to Mrs. Caroline's separation from her then-husband, and her subsequent move to New York City. After sitting vacant for many years, with frequent changes in ownership, multiple escapes from the From the Wrecking Ball, in addition to being the backdrop for a popular porn flick, as well as a murder scene, today Caroline's has reinstated its reputation as a Beaux-Arts gem with commanding views of the San Francisco Bay and surrounding hills, and has been beautifully restored to its fullest integrity. The 98-room mansion and its French gardens are currently owned by the Carolans Foundation, who offer free carefully curated tours to the public exclusively via a lottery system. Number 8. The Elms. Yet another Newport mansion, and there are quite a few of them, so we're gonna have to warn you, because quite a few of Newport's mansions have made this list. Completed in 1901, the Elms was the summer residence of coal baron Edward Julius Berwind and his wife who hailed from Philadelphia and New York. Fashioned after the 18th-century Chateau Daniers in France, this 48-room mansion which required the help of 40 servants, boasted an exquisite collection of Renaissance ceramics, 18th-century European paintings, and Oriental jades. In addition, there are elaborate classical revival gardens on the grounds. Mr. Burwine's sister Julia inherited the home after his passing in 1936. After Julia's death in 1961, her surviving relatives auctioned off the home's contents and sold the mansion to developers. In 1962 after narrowly escaping the wrecking ball, the Preservation Society of Newport County purchased the Elms. And today the fully restored mansion is a national historic landmark. And like many Newport mansions, you can browse tastefully decorated rooms and stroll through its magnificent gardens all throughout the year. Number 9. The Lyndhurst Mansion. Though the construction of this Gothic revival mansion is a few decades shy from the actual Gilded Age period, many scenes of HBO's The Gilded Age were filmed here. Hence, how could we not include it in this lineup? Built in 1838, for New York politician William Paulding Jr., it sits on a gorgeous 67-acre park overlooking the Hudson River. Its final inhabitants were the Gould family who kept the home intact and true to how they found it back in the 1880s. On the inside, you'll find it dim, somewhat medieval, but extremely romantic. Characteristic of Gothic and Gilded Age interiors. Today the estate is owned by the National Trust for Historic Preservation and it is open year-round for craft fairs, exhibitions, exploring, and tours for a minimal fee. Number 10. Biltmore Estate. This 8,000-acre estate nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Asheville, North Carolina, is known as America's largest private home. Built between 1889 and 1895 as a country home for George Washington Vanderbilt, this 250-room French Renaissance chateau spanning 175,000 square feet includes a whopping 35 bedrooms, 43 bathrooms, and 65 fireplaces. In the days when George, Edith, and Cornelia Vanderbilt resided at Biltmore, they required a staff of approximately 40 members. 
You can visit the estate at any time of the year for a relaxing stay at one of its hotels and a myriad of fun activities. In fact, Biltmore is very much like a small countryside village with multiple shops, restaurants, vineyards, cultural events, nature trails, farms, cottages, playgrounds, tours, and so much more. Number 11. Ohika Castle. At 109,000 square feet and 127 rooms, Ohika Castle comes in as America's second largest private home. Some call it the Versailles of New York. Others call it a huge inspiration for F. Scott Fitzgerald's famous novel, The Great Gatsby. This majestic French-style chateau on Long Island's glitzy North Shore, was built by investment banker Otto Hermann Kahn between 1914 and 1919 as a summer home. The name Ohika is an acronym using the first several letters of each part of his name. The castle was later purchased by developer Gary Melius in 1984, and is now a hotel with 32 guest rooms and suites. It has also become a popular wedding venue for uber-rich socialites, politicians, and celebrities, in addition to being a unique backdrop to many photo shoots, television series and films. The estate also offers a bar and restaurant on the premises, and historic tours of the mansion and its manicured gardens. Number 12. The Carson Mansion. We finally have a Victorian for you. In fact, this stately home in Eureka, California is considered the most grand Victorian home in America. Though a bit eclectic, it is also known as one of the premier examples of Queen Anne-style architecture in the United States, and is one of the most highly photographed Victorians. Built by lumber baron William Carson between 1884 and 1886, the 18-room mansion remained in the Carson family until 1950, when it was sold to local community business leaders. Today, it serves as the headquarters to the Igamar Club, a private gentleman's club, and is closed to the public. Number 13. Old Westbury Gardens. This was the estate of very well-to-do businessman John Schaefer Phipps, an heir to the Phipps family fortune. Completed in 1906, the 23-room Carolean Revival Mansion known as Westbury House, was built as a wedding gift for Phipps's bride Margarita. Another Great Gatsby inspiration, the property was converted into a museum home in 1959. Today you are welcome to explore both the house, furnished with period antiques and artwork, as well as its grounds, which include 200 acres of some of the most beautiful gardens, wooded paths, ponds, and lakes scattered throughout. The museum is also host to a variety of fun family events, classes, exhibitions, and wedding photography. Number 14. Rosecliff. Of course, we had to head back to Newport one last time. You didn't think we'd leave out Rosecliff now, did you? Built between 1898 and 1902 by Teresa Fair Ulrichs, a silver heiress from Nevada, the French Baroque Revival Mansion quickly became Newport's hotspot for lavish parties and fabulous formal events. The 30-room, 29,000-square-foot building, is a combination copy of the Grand and Petit Trianon at Versailles, and sits on six acres. By the mid-20th century, the original furnishings were sold off by the Ulrich's son. The home was later purchased by Mr. and Mrs. J. Edgar Monroe, of New Orleans, who also loved to entertain. However, their parties were less formal and more laid back, many of which had a Mardi Gras theme, where everyone would dress in costumes. The couple would eventually donate the home to the Newport Preservation Society in 1971. Today you can visit Rosecliff and tour its interiors and grounds for a modest fee. Its interiors are somewhat under-decorated and have more of a museum setting. However, it's still a must-see and one of the stops you absolutely have to make while in Newport. Number 15. The Vanderbilt Mansion. A mansion built specifically for the aristocratic lifestyle, this classical-style home was built by Frederick William Vanderbilt, another one of Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt's grandsons. Constructed between 1896 and 1899 as a country palace, it is historically known as Hyde Park, one of the area's oldest Hudson River estates. The 54-room mansion was richly decorated using exotic wood paneling, imported marble, lush velvets, French tapestries, and antique building components salvaged from the great houses of Europe, customary of that time. At the time of Vanderbilt's passing in 1938, he left the house to his late wife's niece, Margaret Van Allen, who later transferred the house, its furnishings, and 200 acres to the U.S. government. The house entered the National Park Service and was opened to the public in 1940 as a national museum. You can visit free of charge and explore its grounds to witness scenic views of the Hudson River, beautiful Italian gardens, manicured landscapes, and of course to take a guided tour of the impeccably preserved, fully furnished mansion. Number 16. Kaikut. 
Just down the river from the Vanderbilt mansion, is an estate that was home to four generations of the Rockefeller family. Yes folks, we've arrived at Kaikut, another one of those Hudson Valley estates you cannot afford to miss. This impressive classical revival Georgian mansion sits on the highest point in Pocantico Hills, the extensive Rockefeller estate in the town of Mount Pleasant. Built in the years between 1908 and 1913, it overlooks the Hudson River, giving you breathtaking views of the area. The name Kaikut stemming from the Dutch word Kai Kut, actually means look out or watch out. It also boasts 40 rooms worth of the Rockefeller's private 20th century art collection, Chinese and European ceramics, accessories, and fine furnishings. Today, the estate is owned by the National Trust for Historic Preservation and is maintained by the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. Guided tours given by historic Hudson Valley offer you intimate perspectives of this magnificent mansion, where you get to witness not only the tasteful European-inspired interiors, but also original works by Picasso, Monet, Matisse, Chagall, Warhol, and more. Tours also include the coach barn, as well as the beautifully landscaped grounds featuring multiple garden styles with terraces, pavilions, fountains, sculpture, and so much more. Number 17. Filoli. Located 30 miles south of San Francisco, is a 654-acre estate famous for its appearance in the opening credits of the 80s hit soap opera, Dynasty. Yes, this was the inspiration behind the wealthy Carrington family home. Completed in 1917, for gold and water tycoon William Bowers born II and his wife, the magnificent 54,000-square-foot Georgian-style home has 56 rooms total, and houses two resource libraries related to the home's history. The name Philoli is an acronym using the first two letters from the key words of William Bourne's credo, fight for a just cause, love your fellow man, and live a good life. Following the Bourne's deaths, the estate was sold to the Roth family in 1937, who added even more spectacular features to the grounds. In 1975, Mrs. Roth donated the entire estate to the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Today, the California landmark is open to the public year-round where you can spend the entire day touring its 16 acres of formal gardens with sweeping views of the Santa Cruz Mountains, the Gentleman's Orchard, nature trails, a bridge straddling the infamous San Andreas Fault, a horse pasture, a reservoir, and of course, we can't forget the mansion itself. Number 18. Sands Point Preserve. This estate is unique because it's actually a magnificent 216-acre park, which features not one, but three colossal Gold Coast mansions, as well as a learning center. The entire park embodies the grandeur and elegance that define Long Island's Gilded Age. And again, F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. Formerly known as the Guggenheim Estate, the three mansions on Sands Point Preserve, are Hempstead House and Castle Gould. Both Tudor-style castles built in 1909 for original owner Howard Gould. And there's Falaise, a 13th-century manor home built in 1923 after the Guggenheims had purchased the estate. Owned today by Nassau County, and maintained by the Sands Point Preserve Conservancy, the park offers year-round educational programs, cultural programs, mansion tours, landscape gardens, guided nature walks, holiday events, and a plethora of other fun activities for everyone. Number 19. The Lockwood Matthews Mansion. Though this Norwalk, Connecticut mansion wasn't exactly built within the Gilded Age period, it played a major influential role in defining the period and the many mansions to come after it. Completed in 1868, only two years shy of the official onset of the Gilded Age, this Queen Anne Gothic Revival chateauesque style mansion is one of the first, as well as one of the most significant Second Empire-style homes built in the United States. The furnished 62-room granite beauty comes with an opulent display of stenciled walls, inlaid woodwork, and a skylight rotunda. The home was built by Le Grand Lockwood, a financier and railroad tycoon who died unexpectedly in 1872. It was then sold to Charles D. Matthews and his family in 1876, who later sold it to the city of Norwalk in 1941. Today, the Lockwood Matthews Mansion is open to the public for guided house tours, exhibits, and special events. And last we have number 20. Clayton. Located within the Frick Estate in Pittsburgh's Point Breeze neighborhood, is the home inhabited by industrialist Henry Clay Frick and his family prior to moving to New York. The Italianate-style mansion was purchased by Mr. and Mrs. Frick shortly after their marriage in 1881. Built sometime around 1870, it served as the family's primary residence from 1882 to 1905. Originally a modest 11-room house, Clayton was later transformed into a grander 23-room Gilded Age-style mansion as Frick's pockets grew deeper, and the family grew larger. Frick's daughter Helen Clay Frick eventually named the 5.5-acre estate, the Frick Pittsburgh, in her later years.
And when she died in 1984, she willed all of it to be used as a museum and gift to her community. Today the meticulously restored landmark is open year-round for tours focusing on the home's artifacts, its history, and the Frick family's life in Pittsburgh. The estate also hosts a car and carriage museum, the Frick Art Museum, a cafe, a museum shop, a greenhouse, among lush gardens for you to explore. And that's it for the top 20 most amazing mansions of the Gilded Age. So, which of these did you like the most? Which ones are you adding to your bucket list? Are there any other Gilded Age mansions you feel should have made this list? Anyway, if there's anything else you would like to mention about this topic, feel free to share it with us in the comments below. Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching. And we'll see each other next time.